welcome back to Blast from the Past from the Past Interviews. I'm your host today and I'm here with Dr. Daniel Hale Williams, one of the best doctors in the world and one of the first surgeons to perform a successful open heart surgery. Dr. Williams, welcome to the show. <clears throat> uh, thank you so much for having me, uh, Mr. Uh, interviewer. So, Dr. Williams, let's get right into it. Many people consider you to be a great surgeon, but do you consider yourself to be a great surgeon? Yes, you may even call me the uh, Michael Jordan of surgery. But on a more serious note, um, do I consider myself to be a great surgeon? Mm, I think I'm a good surgeon. I think I provide great care to my patients, and I don't really like to talk about if one surgeon's better than the other, or if one surgeon's worse than the other. But if you're asking, do I provide quality care for my patients? I believe I do. Ah, that's wonderful, Dr. Williams. You seem to be a very humble person. Uh, on to the next question. Can you tell us a little bit more about the uh, patient you performed a successful heart surgery on? His name was uh, James Cornish, I believe. Ah, uh, yes, James Cornish. Yes, he arrived in July of uh, 1893. He was a 26-year-old patient, if I remember correctly. Uh, he arrived at the Provident Hospital after suffering a stab wound through the left fifth costal cartilage. Uh, during the night, he continued to bleed from the wound, unfortunately. Uh, and by morning, he was in shock. He was in shock, not shocked. And with no prior experience, I was forced to perform an open heart surgery on him to repair his pericardium, which is a thin sac that uh, surrounds the heart. Um, I had a surgical team of five other surgeons, but they're mostly observers. I was the primary surgeon. Um, and I had a, a pretty extensive procedure to undergo, but I was very uh, confident as I want to make sure that I saved this patient's life. To begin, I uh, extended the stab wound towards the sternum on either side in the direction of the border of the costal cartilage that's near the rib cage, and I extended it horizontally. Uh, I then removed a segment of the costal cartilage to expose and ligate the vessels. Thankfully, the amount of bleeding started to reduce. There was a laceration in the light right ventricle near the coronary artery, but there was no bleeding. I sutured the pericardium and I closed the patient's chest cavity to end the surgery. Now, unfortunately, due to the lack of equipment, there were some difficulties in the recovery of the patient. For example, the patient's recovery was complicated by a two and a half liter pleural effusion. That's when there's a buildup of fluid near the lungs and that can hinder breathing, eventually leading to death. Um, but don't worry, the fluid was later drained by me, and the patient, thankfully, was discharged after three weeks with no other uh, complications. Dr. Williams, as you may or may not know, due to your surgery, uh, due to your successful surgery, we are now able to save more lives using a open-heart surgery. So I want to take the time now to thank you for that and progressing the field of surgery. Thank you. Now, uh, for our last question, uh, Dr. Williams, have you made any other contributions to the field of medicine? Yes, of course, and I'm a little offended that you asked me that, sir. Uh, I've actually founded the Provident Hospital, the first black-owned and black-operated hospital. Um, but although it was the first black-owned and black-operated hospital, I provided care to both blacks and whites. Furthermore, I was also surgeon-in-chief at uh, Freedman's Hospital. Um, I basically reconstructed the Freedman's Hospital to make it what it is today. Uh, I added departments like gynecology, dermatology, obstetrics, urology, and neurology. And I also fired the entire surgical assistants at Freedman's Hospital because I deemed them to be too lazy. And I also started a training program for black interns. Dr. Williams, I apologize if I offended you. Um, I didn't mean anything by it. Uh, that was a mistake on my part. Excuse me for my ignorance. Um, would you like to say anything to the audience before we in, uh, end this interview, Dr. Williams? Ha 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 ha! No need to be so apologetic, Mr. Interviewer. That is why I'm here today, to educate. Um, it seems that the accomplishments of some African-American individuals has been hidden uh, or swept under the rug. 
lectures say, during the time period during which those accomplishments were accomplished. I think it's time to bring what people did into the light and award those who have helped us progress as a society. Great. Dr. Williams, thank you so much for being with us here today on this episode of Blast from the Past. From the Past. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we'll see you next week. What? We ran out of funding. We're canceled? Um, okay, apparently this is the first and the last episode of Bass from the Past from the Past. Uh, thank you for watching? <laughs>